Tonight's reading is from John chapter 9. I'm reading from the New English Translation. And this is a passage I've heard preached quite a lot by able-bodied preachers. And they always come to the same conclusion, that it's absolutely wonderful that Jesus healed this poor blind man and healed his affliction and the miracle, the point of the miracle is it shows Jesus' power and authority and it enables the blind man to be a, a, a contributing member of society. And I hear that preach from the pulpit and I think, isn't that the biggest load of tripe? But as a disabled person, I have a bit of a different perspective on the contribution of disabled people. Come on in. The sermon's just getting started. <laughs> You're just in time. So, so as a disabled, right, there's no one behind you. As a disabled person, I have a little bit of a different perspective as to the contribution of disabled people in society. I think we have a lot more to give. And when I look at this healing, when I look at this miracle, I don't think that Jesus healing the blind man is for the blind man's benefit. I think it's for the benefit of his community. And let's look at this parable and I think it'll become obvious why. The other thing I want you to notice about it is this is out of the book the Gospel of John, and John's Gospel opens, in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that sets us up for an understanding of what John's going to be telling us. He wants us to think of the creation story. He wants us to look at Jesus in the context of that first seven days of creation. Specifically, we're talking about a blind man. And so he wants us to look at that day when God said, let there be light. So look for that. The other thing is, Jesus is in God's shoes here. John is putting Jesus in the shoes of God himself. And so when we think of Jesus, we think of God creating. And so think of the blind man as being remade, reborn, recreated. How did God form man in the creation story? He formed him from the dust of the ground. He formed him from the dust. From The word is Adama, means clay. And you might notice that word's very similar to Adam. There's a reason for that. And Adam means humanity. Adama is clay, so he forms him from the clay. And we'll see that same word here in this passage. Look out for it. Now Jesus was passing by. He saw a man who had been blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who committed the sin that caused him to be born blind? Him or his parents? Now already there's something weird in this passage. The man was born blind. How could he have sinned to be born blind? I like that because it brings up one of these things that we don't af often think of. Is there reincarnation? But that's not what this sermon is about. We did that a few weeks back. <laughs> I'm not doing that again. But if you're looking for it, there's that question, is there reincarnation? Could he have sinned in a previous life to be born blind? Jesus throws the question right out. He answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but he was born blind so the acts of God may be revealed in him. In other words, people aren't born disabled or become disabled because they aren't made in the image of God. Disability is not a result of sin. It's not a result of disease. It's just how God made us. I'm an epileptic. 
My brain works differently than yours. And God made my brain that way. He formed it that way. I sign. My second language is ASL. And I have talked to enough deaf people to know that most of them do not consider their, their deafness to be a disability. They consider it to be their identity. Because that's how God formed them. And for the blind, I don't know any blind people. But it might be the same for them. It's their identity. It's how God formed them. There's nothing wrong with this blind man. And that's what Jesus is telling his disciples. It's not sinful to be blind. It's not wrong to be disabled. But God has a plan. God works through what we're not able to do. <clears throat> Jesus said, we must perform the deeds of the one who sent me as long as it is daytime. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. There's that creation language again. Having said this, he spat on the ground and made some adama, some mud with his saliva. He smeared the mud on the blind man's eyes. Notice it doesn't say on his eyelids, it says on his eyes. He formed new eyes for the man, just as God formed the first human from Adama. He takes that Adama and he forms the first man, or he forms the man's eyes, excuse me. And he says, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Now this pool of Siloam is important. It is one of two pools in Jerusalem with running water where the poor could go and they could wash and become ritually clean so that they could walk up to the temple and worship. That they would be ritually clean so they could enter the presence of God. Now, why does he need to be ritually clean? It's kind of strange that Jesus says, go and wash. He doesn't need to wash. He doesn't need to be ritually clean unless he's going to the temple. But Jesus just spit in his eyes. That does make him unclean. A bodily excretion makes him unclean. But he doesn't need to be clean unless he's going to the temple. But this refers back to John chapter 3, where Jesus talks about being born again of the water and the spirit. This is the man's baptism. Notice he does it himself. That's kind of odd as well. Normally someone baptizes you, but here he just goes and washes in the pool of Siloam and he's baptized. But that baptism is a mark of a new life, a new creation. We are now made new in God's image, and that is what is happening here. And not for his own sake, but for the sake of others. So the blind man went away and washed and came back seeing. Then the neighbors and the people who had seen him previously as a beggar began saying, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some people said, this is the man, while others said, no, but he looks like him. Notice, no one knows his name. He's just the man in their community. He's just that one over there that sits and begs. He's the person who sits next to you in the pew, and you don't know them. He's the one that sits on the back pew that no one gets to know, that they duck out before the service because they know they're not really welcome. That's who this man is. He could have been a gargoyle and he would have had the same place in the community. That's how he's been treated. But he kept insisting, I am the one. So they asked him, how then were you made to see? He replied, the man called Jesus made mud, smeared it on my eyes and told me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and was able to see. They said to him, where is this man? He replied, 
I don't know. Jesus was the first person to really notice him, to really treat him like a human being. And only because of this miracle do people notice the man. Do people give him the time of day? And they should have done that all along. They should have noticed this man. They should have gone to him with compassion and said, Brother, how can we help you? What do you need? Are you hungry? Are you cold? Are you lonely? Come have dinner with my family. That should have been his place in the community. But no, he was just the gargoyle in the corner, the beggar on the street, the one that no one noticed because he was on the back pew. But it gets worse. They brought the man who used to be blind to the Pharisees. So the Pharisees asked him again how he had gained his sight. He replied, he put mud in my eyes and I washed and now I'm able to see. Then some of the Pharisees began to say, this man is not from God because he does not observe the Sabbath. The Pharisees have rules, you know. And if you don't follow their rules, you can't really be a part of their church. And sometimes we forget that our rules are not God's rules. And if we're not looking out for what God is doing, then we will make our rules an idol and they will get in the way of taking care of the needy and seeing who has the Spirit of God. And we will be as blind as that man. But others said, how can a man who's a sinner perform such miraculous signs? Thus there was a division among the Pharisees. So again they asked the man who used to be blind, what do you say about him since he caused you to see? Notice they've called him as a witness now. He has authority. He can speak the truth, can't he? That would be the role of a witness. He is a prophet, the man replied. Now the Jewish religious leaders refused to believe that he had really been blind and had gained his sight it conflicts with their faith. It conflicts with their rules. It can't be real. They're looking right at him. <laughs> they know the man, but it can't be real. Until at last they summoned his parents. They asked the parents, is this your son whom you say was born blind? Then how does he now see? So his parents replied, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how he is now able to see. Ask him. He's of age. He will speak for himself. So the parents are a witness as well. Then they summoned the man who used to be blind a second time and said to him, promise before God to tell the truth. We know that this man is a sinner. Once again, they can't believe their own eyes. He replied, I don't know whether he is a sinner. I do know one thing, that although I was blind, now I can see. Then they said to him, what did he do to you? What, how did he cause you to see? He answered, I told you already and you didn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? It makes me sad that snark doesn't translate very well. Are you deaf? Do you need healing too? Do you want to become one of his disciples? The man is literally making fun of them. He is mocking the Pharisees at this point because they can't believe what they are seeing. He hasn't seen for but a day, and he can believe his eyes better than they can. They heaped insults on him, saying, you're his disciple? We're disciples of Moses. 
we know that God has spoken to Moses. We do not know where this man comes from. The man replied, oh, this is a remarkable thing, that you don't know where he comes from, and yet he caused me to see. Notice they're just pulling out their degrees. Well, we sit in the seat of Moses. That's what Jesus said about the Pharisees as well. They sit in the seat of Moses, so you do have to listen to them. They have authority. Go ahead and listen to them. But note that they're hypocrites, so don't do what they do, but do listen to what they say. The degrees come out, but we have all the education and authority. We should be able to dictate what your reality is. The man says, is that a remarkable thing? that you don't know where he comes from, and yet he caused me to see. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners. But if anyone is devout and does his will, God listens to him. Never before has anyone heard of someone causing a man born blind to see. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. In other words, can't you believe your own eyes? Can't you see a miracle and believe it's a miracle? But they can't because they are looking to crucify Jesus. And what this man is saying isn't useful to them. So they have to deny it. They replied, you were born completely in sinfulness and yet you presume to teach us? So they threw him out. What happened? to what they said before about him being a witness. Now he's just, now he's disabled. Now, now it comes out. No, you're not allowed to have an opinion. You're not allowed to sit at the table with us, even though we pulled up a chair for you. And this is the experience of disabled people all the time. People will say, don't you know that, don't you know that there are all these accommodations? Don't you know that there are these programs that you can go through? And when the disabled person says, no, those programs are only for this group and I'm in this group, or I've already done these things and nothing worked. I was denied these things oh, well, that can't be right. Surely you can find help somewhere. But Jesus didn't heal this man for his own sake. He healed him because his community was not believing their own eyes. They could see this man every day and not really see him. They could see his need and not take care of him. That was true 2,000 years ago, and it's still true today. We think, well, that's not right. We have all these programs in place. How can, you not, how, how can they not be working? Believe your eyes. Well, Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, so he went looking for the man. Isn't that amazing? The Pharisees, his own community, didn't care whether he lived or died, but as soon as Jesus heard he was in need, Jesus went looking for him. So he found the man and said to him, do you believe in the Son of Man? The man replied, and who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus told him, you have seen him. He is the one speaking with you. For judgment I have come into this world so that those who do not see may gain their sight, and the ones who see may become blind. Well, brothers and sisters, I think we often switch places between those two seats of judgment, don't we? 
often we're the ones who see and often we're the ones who are blind. And we have to keep looking to God. We have to keep looking to his word and, his, and Christ's example to figure out exactly how we can gain our sight back. Because even if we weren't born blind, it still dims with age, doesn't it? Every now and then we need to get our eyes checked. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and asked, we are not blind too, are we? Jesus replied, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now because you claim you can see, your guilt remains. You know the man is there. You know what you need to do. So brothers, sisters, siblings, I want you to know that wherever you've been, wherever you're going, Jesus is making a seat for each and every one of us at the table. If we'll just be washed, if we'll just be, if we'll just embrace the image that God made us in, or maybe even the image that God is remaking us in, then Jesus is quick. He is searching for us to welcome us into that community now and for eternity. Amen? Amen.